Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're going to add a door to Wimpack 4.9. The, um, the door controller we're going to add will be um, via IP. So to do that, we need to go to the door controller itself and check it and change its IP address to something we're going to use. It's in subnet range and also tell the controller it's now hosted by Wimpack. So let's browse to the controller in question. Now I've already changed its IP address um, to 155. Uh, I'm using a, a NetAx controller. It's the same setup whether it's a NetAx or um, Max Pro. Well, let's just go to uh, Palette Configuration. And what you would do is you would go to um, the host and loop setup, um, change it to Wimpack, uh, change your uh, setting to ACNAC, uh, it's a direct IP connection that will, once you change to ACNAC and you disable encryption, the port number will be 3001. When you make any changes, click save at the bottom. So what I found you do is you click at ACNAC and disable encryption, press save, and you will see here it will change from 2000, 2101 to 3001. The important part is you're on 3001. Uh, then we would go to the settings tab and in here you can change your IP addresses obviously the most important thing to do is switch DHCP off uh, change your IP address your subnet and your gateway to suit your site now I'm using a generic site so this is my gateway 254 and I've changed it from the standard IP that comes the, the, the NetAx comes with um, from 150 uh, to 155. It's just all. It's, I've got three or four to add. So that's the controller configured. As I say, I'm using a NetAx. That's the NetAx controller configured. If it was Max Pro and MPA1, uh, sorry, an MPA2 or an MPA4, it's actually the same screens. Next, we need to go to Wimpack. Now we can go to configuration. Uh, let's go to device map. Now you can see here, I've already set my system up. I've already applied the licenses and so on and created a, an operator because I'm using PE. If you're using SE, you wouldn't need to worry about that. However, I've already set one up, but I'm going to add a new one. So let's go and left click, go to add. And what we're going to add, well, are we adding an old system here, which is a loop system with on T32 with an, the obsolete PCI3. Or we're going to use some modern controllers where it's all IP. We use an IP. So we have a choice here. Is it NetAx or an MPA? Well, we were adding a NetAx. So let's click on that. What type of NetAx is it? It's a, mine is a 123. The name, whenever you give it a name, don't leave any spaces. So I'll just call this one three door. That's it. Door controller description. If you want to give it a description, go for it so you can find it easier on larger systems. Communication type, it's going to be TCIP. What's its IP address? 192.1.155. That's the address of my device. Now the important thing before clicking next is to add that to the ADV. So that's the controller now added to the ADV. Click OK. Next um, is card formats. Um, I happen to know what formats I'm using. I'm using 26-bit. But I'm using a, a, an iClass reader with um, multi-class. So I'm probably going to be using 34-bit and 38 down the line. So I'm going to leave all my formats open and available. If you know, you know what reader you use and what format, we'll select the right format. If it's not here and you need to create a new format, you can do, you can go to Format 12 and put in the credential information. So you can see here when it's a 26-bit card, um, the first card bit it reads is 10, and it reads forward 16 bits to get the card number. Um, the site code is from the bit number 2, and it reads forward 8 digits to find the site code. So anyway, that's the formats I'm going to use. ADV is greyed out because we've already added it, so nothing to do yet. Click Next. Time zones. In, in my example, my, my reader is always going to work. It's always going to allow access 
through the door. If you want to restrict, you know, this is a three door control I'm using here. I'm only going to use two, two ports, but if you wanted to restrict access, you know, to certain doors at certain times, then you could um, add a new time zone and create a time zone. Again, give it a name, uh, short description if you like, and then simply what time is it working from. So if we wanted it from um, on a Monday from 8 till 6, we could do that and we could then um, copy that throughout the days. And apply it to Sundays or Mondays if you want, uh, Saturdays or Sundays if you wanted to. But we're not, so we can cancel that. And um, click on next. Anti pass back enabled, no, continuous card reads, reverse LEDs. Um, sometimes on the older um, Rosslayer readers, what is called the red LED is actually a green LED input. You might want to change the way it behaves. Site codes, well, I'm going to use two site codes in my system. Um, 10, click return, and 14. Uh, it's just, it, I happen to know the site codes I need. So if you're adding new cards to a system, you need to know the site codes. If you don't know them, leave them to zero, and uh, you can learn them in, in different ways later on. Click on next. We're always looking for this ADV. When it says add, we need to study this page closely. So now we're looking at inputs. Um, the, gener the generic input will be input one, which is the um, exit button input, or egress, as uh, they call it in Honeywell. Um, I said, as I said before, this is a three door controller. So door one, egress. Um, input two would be door contact or um, a monitoring circuit from a lock release, a uh, mag lock. And if we scroll down a bit here, we can see it's repeated again um, for reader two. So again, if I select this one, no ADV, add, this is door two, exit button input, and click OK. Um, nothing particularly I want to change there, so we can leave everything as it is. Um, oh yeah, exit button inputs, have an open circuit. Go back to this one here. Change from close to open. Um, that's all okay. Uh, if you were using a, a EOL on your exit buttons to make it more secure, this is where we say it's a supervised and put in the resistor value. But I'm not, so I'll tick that. Click on next. Um, outputs. Um, so output one. Let's add that. This is your lock. Okay. Output two, if you're using it, that would be relay two. Let's add that. So if you're using the um, the door contact to sound the local alarm, if it's a push door open PDO, that would be the relay output. And if you remember, we scroll down a little bit. Um, this is relay two. Matches the inputs, so I'll click add. Um, that's my output taken care of. Click on next. Readers, obviously there's a reader port one. Let's add that. Okay. Reader two, let's add that. No, no, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted reader two, sorry. Tick that one. Let's go to that one. Like that. It is a three-door controller, but I'm actually only using um, two doors. Um, so this is two A. If it was two B, that'd be a, a, a reader in, reader out. Um, so two door. If at a later stage I wanted to come back and enable door three, reader three, we could do that. We just come back to this ADV and enable it. Um, if we're doing reader in, reader out, this is how we do it. So. 1A is reader in, and 1B is reader out. So that's all that. So let's click on next. That's it all configured. Let's click on finish. Let's initialize. Okay. We'll, we'll initialize it once we've done a little bit more work. So now in the device map, three door is available. Let's go back to configuration, define access area. 
show available devices. First of all, the entrances. Click, and drag. Click and drag. Then we're going to go to control area. Have I just done that one? No, but uh, test site. This is the name of my, I have gave uh, my site. It's a test site. So if it's your client site, you would give it a name there when you're initially setting the thing up. Um, so test site, click on show available devices. Panel first, door three, three door even. And then same thing, but this time we're looking for entrance. Which we have two. What's that? So that's the device added to the ADV, we've added it to the control area, and we've added access areas so now if we just go back this time we're going to go to card and access level so when you're setting the system up now I've already set this one up when you're setting the system up you have to create an access level for which a card can go through when, we, when you're adding cards it asks you what group does this card belong to now I've already created an access level, access level called doors and that means that any card I assign will be allowed through these doors, which are green. So at the moment, see, I've already added one door previously, but I'm going to add these two doors now as well. By right-clicking and set access for all areas. So that means if, you, if you're in the, a group called doors, in, in my example, you're allowed through all three doors. You know, if we click on add and add a new um, level, Test. Click OK. You can see there's test. Now, if you, when I add your card later on, um, and it asks you what group is that belongs to, if it belongs to test, then maybe only you're allowed through reader two. And to do that, you simply put your mouse over the door in question right click and click on configure so that's the most most we've done now and all we need to do finally is go to operations and we can see our devices are in the control map now now in my case it, it's going to take a while for these to come online so you just have to take my word for it that's how you do it um, it's just because I am on a different network. So because I can't show you how to initialize it in this video, um, just because, as I say, I'm on a different network, what I'm going to do now is splice a, another training video um, showing you how to initialize the panel. It's much, much the same conversation, but I really just show you how to, to get it initialized, get that panel switched on. You can see here the device is online, three door, it's part of the ADV group. And if we go to operations and control map, you can see door one needs to be initialized through all the information there. going to go through the procedure of uploading um, the data we've asked it to, to upload, card holders, holiday groups, time zones and things like that. And that's it. Once that's um, uploaded, this splash screen will disappear and the control Thanks very will much be for online. Watching. And All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.